Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode on Lumber Capital Dog Yard. Today is all about burls. What are they? Why are they so valuable? And what makes a tree grow one? Jumping right into it, there are several different types of burls that I wanna go over because they're not all equally valuable. Some are caused by disease and stress and maybe weather. Others are actually compromised hormone, compromised growth hormone in the tree. And the latter is actually what creates more beautiful grain formation, hence a more valuable burl. Now in front of me here, we have a white oak eyed burl. Now this one is a beast. It's absolutely gorgeous. You don't usually find ones quite this big. Not saying they don't get bigger. If you let them grow, they will actually grow at their own rate over time. This one is beautiful. I, I hate to part with it, but at the same time, first come first serve on this sucker. I know some, I know some wood turners are probably drooling over this one because it is absolutely beautiful. This is what's known as an eyed burl. And I'm going to tell you how I think I know that. First off, let's start off with something called a layered burl. This is your least valuable type of burl. And it's caused when the tree is injured and it calluses over to almost protect itself or heal itself. And you'll know that it's a layered burl because the grain formation will actually kind of still go with the tree. It will be a hump, but you, you'll notice that instead of it being all gnarly like this one, it will kind of just keep going with the grain of the tree itself. And this is, like I said, a callus that probably at some point that tree was damaged, whether from weather or you know from a broken limb, anything can really do it. The tree will callus over and create what's known as a layered burl. These don't have nearly as crazy grain patterns as something like this eyed burl here. Not saying though it can't be valuable and utilized. It's definitely still a unique part of a tree and something just that's just so cool you know I don't see that too much usually everything's just pretty straight grained around here but once in a while we'll get a crazy burl in like this and it's hard to pass that up because since when does wood do that right it's, it's crazy that something so beautiful can come out of something bad right it really shows us a lot about life in that way because a burl is never really a good thing even this eyebrow here that wasn't caused simply because of an injury what causes an eye burl is compromised growth hormone in the tree itself so compromised growth hormone creates what's known as this eye burl and how I guess why they'd call it an eyed burl is if you look up really closely you can actually see where some of the bark is peeling off you can see that's how I know it's an eyed burl look at that you see little I mean it's just it's very very detailed very dramatic you can see it pretty good right here as well see that look at that see it in that as well I mean it's all over it's all over this thing is massive and gorgeous very dramatic grain I, I can't wait to see what somebody makes out of this thing I mean I would throw it up on the mill and and mill it myself to show you guys but I don't want to screw it up because this thing is really 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 cool and I want somebody to buy it who knows what they're doing and does something really cool with it because I, it's just it's a work of art honestly it really is and like I said this one's white oak so it will go quite well it'll work quite well with any kind of furniture or um, they make really cool stuff out of it um, 
cabinets and little jewelry boxes and all kinds of really cool things. Anything that you want just intense, detailed wood in, it works really, really cool. So this one's quite large, so you could make something a good size, good size out of this. Um, and I, I almost feel like it'd be better to maybe cut this one into sections because of the way that it grew. I mean, you don't usually see one quite like this. It's very gnarly the way that each piece kind of sticks out on its own like this. I have another one I'm going to show you guys here in a second that is soft maple. This soft maple one looks completely different, although it is also a valuable burl. Um, I might be able to show you examples of a layered burl, but this one, this is my little friend. I, I've grown to quite love this, love this one, and I, I can't wait to see what somebody can make out of it. I've already said that a lot of times, but it's really true. Um, I love this one, and I hope it finds a great home. First come, first serve on this sucker. Uh, I'll show you in a second what one of our local woodworkers did with one that I gave him. And it wasn't even like a good one. It wasn't even close to one like this. And it, it just looks really cool. So let me show you the other one real quick. And maybe I'll show you that picture of that cool jewelry box that this guy made out of this burl. Um, and also the layered burl I want to show you. So come on, let's go. I would call this one a layered burl. Just by looking at it, you can kind of see how it doesn't really stick up quite like a tumorous burl would, like the one that I showed you over there. This one looks more like a calloused over. You can see the limb was there. I mean, who knows? That could have been the cause of this, just from an injury. This one's birch. We have a bunch of birch burls uh, available for purchase. And some of them are layered like this one and others perhaps eyed, you know? The only way to know is to cut one open and see. But I'm gonna show you, uh, you see that whole pile of them right there. But let me show you this soft maple one over here. This one is, pretty much all the way around. And boy, is she a beauty. She's not quite as big as the other one, but more, well, I thought maybe I could roll it over, but I don't know, it's a little heavy for that. Yeah, watch out, dog. That's what she looks like. Very cool, very cool. I'm sure you guys have seen these perhaps along the roadside. You see that a lot along the roadside. You know what my guess is? It's all of that traffic pollution that's creating disease in the tree like that. And that's why you'll see them along the roadside a lot. But out in the woods, they definitely do happen. Compromised growth hormone in the tree, injury, a lot of stuff that could cause it, these were all out in the woods. But along the roadside, huh? Makes sense. So this one's also for sale. It's still in log form. We can cut it for whoever buys it, obviously. You don't have to buy the whole log with it. We'll cut it. But you, you, wanna, you don't wanna cut the burl off. You wanna leave it with the log still on it that way because an interesting thing about the burl is it actually does go into the tree. So you'd never wanna cut the burl off of the tree itself because then you're actually cutting or leaving a lot of the burl in the tree. So this thing actually goes into it. It's not necessarily just an external growth, right? It's in the tree. So that's why we leave it in log form like that but there you have it a whole spiel on burls these things are pretty valuable because of the rarity of them 
You might want to plant a forest right along the roadside and see what happens. I don't know. It's kind of dumb. But anyways, I hope that you guys learned something today. If you did, consider commenting, giving it a like, even subscribing to the channel. I know that's a crazy idea. Just think about it. But other than that, we'll see you back here next time. Bye.